uh, welcome um, to today's show. Thank you. And, um, I'm just so excited to have you uh, as a guest. And um, I just wanted you to just share a little bit about yourself uh, and the work that you do uh, with the audience. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I'm a, a licensed clinical social worker in New Jersey, which means that I'm have a degree in social work that's also a clinical uh, license to practice. Uh, so I'm a psychotherapist uh, and I've been doing that for about um, 18 years and I've worked a lot with trauma right from the beginning with EMDR and um, other things like hypnosis and things that help people with trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, in more recent years, what, what is it, EMDR? Oh, okay. Uh, it stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing, which oh. is a whole bunch of syllables that basically means um, I'm, eye movement, um, alternating bilaterally the si each side of the brain like this. If you Like in REM sleep, your eyes go back and forth, right? Like this? Okay. And this is a technique, basically. And if you did, you can do that using different senses of uh, vision, eye movement, you can do use it by sound. There are apps that have um, EMDR set audio sound that go uh, put sound back and forth in your ears. You can do it by touch. Um, and they have found, and there's tons of research on this, it's been around a while, they use it on vets and uh, in lots of situations, um, that that actually processes stuff out of your brain. It reaches trauma that can't necessarily be accessed just by talking about it and processes it through and brings back the cognitive functioning of the brain again, because, you know, trauma makes us overwhelmed. Right. Oh. So that's, yeah. So, um, and in more recent years, you know, there's a lot about mindfulness, which works very well for trauma. Right, right, right. And that's sort of the, um, where I do mindfulness, um, meditation and, mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. the spiritual aspect, but there's also this aspect as well, which right the, the aspect of putting us in our body. Yes, sorry, yes. I just over talked you there. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, the, the aspect of putting us in our body and and using our body to feel safe. Yeah, uh, because when people are traumatized, they need to relearn how to come back into their bodies and you and feel safe in some way in it because trauma makes it kind of makes us exit <laughs> our bodies. Yeah, very. Yes, so. anxiety and scared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but go, go on. Just tell us a little bit more about. The, um, like, okay. Um, and in recent years, I have. Um, oh, by the way, I, I put together an app called Mind Warrior for m that kind of mindful connection, and um, you know when things like that happen. But um, in recent years, I did, uh, maybe in the last four years, five years. I'm sorry, five years. I have been running groups and focusing a little bit more on people who have been in emotionally abusive relationships. I mean, that can include physical sometimes, but uh -huh. the more subtle types of abuse uh, yeah. that are not like clearly defined, there's a lot of controversy and question, you know, even in the domestic violence world. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Starting to recognize it, but. Um, right, like, like deceit and lying financial abuse, things like yes. that are, are, are gruesome, um, abuse and uh, trauma can result. Exactly. In exactly. Exactly. Yes. So I've been running some group, you know, running groups. I have an online conference calls, a live group, help other people start groups. Um, and most recently I put together a questionnaire. We can talk about that later. Oh, if you want, yeah. To, yeah. To help define it, to mm -hmm. help define the whole thing. Okay. Now so, what, what, Marianne, what, prompted you to become involved in helping others in this way who, who are in these abusive relationships or uh, for lack of a better word or to define it as a psychopathic relationship, let's say. All right. What prompted you? You know, psychopathic is actually a good word because um, there is nothing clinically to define this particular personality except for psychopathic. You know, so if someone has, like they call, you know, the, you use the word narcissist, sociopath, um, exploiter, different terms like that. Clinically, that would be like antisocial personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder, but none of them really kind of capture what we're talking about. We're talking about low conscience. And yeah, the, yeah and, and there's a, re, you know, that's- there's No other a, word, I guess, for it. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, psychopathic is okay, the closest. Yeah. Because psycho, and clinically in research, a psychopath is someone 
who is one has uh, low to no conscience and two is callous unemotional now, those two things create a whole spectrum of issues but basically for me i ended up being with in a relationship with someone like that uh as a therapist as someone who um uh had a 20-year good relationship like very emotionally connected relationship with someone who died so i guess I, that trauma made me a bit vulnerable vulnerable yeah <laughs> yeah and other things that happened that was yeah, it was just a, it's kind of took, right it kind of took me way down you know i was getting a little older and all that and then you know i just ended up being with someone um who i had no context for that kind of person you know as yeah. a therapist we think everyone has the ability to change everyone is inherently good <laughs> yeah yeah right so like things were happening in the relationship that talk about intuition my gut was just like screaming at me all the time you know yeah. i i didn't know what to make of it i thought it was me it's like it's my trauma that's my trauma coming up my fear yeah. of loss um whatever and so i just kind of you know let it go under underground kind of thing yeah and, um just didn't pay attention to it until after a while it became more the relationship itself just became more and more painful and then eventually found some incredible deceit was going on right so that opened my eyes and then i was like oh my body has been talking to me and like, you know, and you go back over it and you go back over every little thing that happens and you're like, Oh yeah, I remember that didn't feel right. But I gave myself some kind of excuse or I believed the person who was lying at the time or, or whatever. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Cause I think sometimes, um, in these cases, what happens is, um, our minds or, and our heart kind of, um, take over and mm -hmm. they, I, I describe it like you said as the gut so yeah. you know, there's the mind the heart and the gut and the gut um, in my own experience and this is through relationships and other things is um, and this is the spiritual side is your higher self or God or mm -hmm. whatever you want to yeah. think whatever you want to call it speaking to you and then when and then when you don't listen to that when you when you allow this you're trying to rationalize things or make excuses or mm -hmm. overlooking you know that sort of thing then you override that and then you find yourself in this trouble <laughs> you know? right yeah right. because your 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 body is is your gut is talking but your mind is saying um this person loves me Right. right. You've already made your mind up that this person loves you. So you start filtering even unusual or things that don't feel right into that context. Yes. And so after this happened to you, um, obviously you, you felt called to, um, to help others uh, either through it or uh, I feel called to help people avoid it altogether. <laughs> Oh, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, me too. That's what I really feel called to do. Well, both, I guess. But, it's both. It's both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's the sooner yeah. you can, like, in the butt, it's the, the better. Like, if you can at least. Much better because they're so traumatizing. Yeah. And that, that's the thing that was so shocking to me. Not also the, the trauma, the, what it did to me was just blew my mind. I mean, if I hadn't lived through it, I almost wouldn't have believed it. Someone who else was telling me, you know, if a client was telling me, oh, this or that, or, you know, and I'm so destroyed by it, it's like, hmm. Um, and then I would probably immediately think, well, there must be some earlier trauma coming in on this. But no, it, it's that right, traumatizing, right. you know. It's yeah, the trauma itself. Yeah, there's something about betrayal that is so, just, uh, does something to you forever, you yeah, know. Uh, yeah. I mean, not that it can't, you can't be healed and work right, on it, but right. it's like changes your whole perception of, of trust and, um, humanity. <laughs> yeah. 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 And is that what, for instance, uh, PTSD or post-traumatic stress, when this happens, like, like you were describing when, um, you look back or you remember back and you say, Oh, wow, that was, I, you know, I was right. And whatever he was cheating or stealing or whatever, mm -hmm. like, um, that's part of the, that's what, uh, the post-traumatic It's like the event happened, but the trauma is well, it's, uh, or what is that exactly hmm. that's a good question it's really two things there's two kinds of trauma one is is like a big event trauma that's what you know you go to war 
Yeah. Someone gets raped, you're in a car accident. Right. Uh, that's that the, the you know, the definition of trauma clinically is really mostly about that. There have been people like Bessel van der Kolk and others who've uh research trauma their whole lives were trying to get more like a developmental or a ongoing kind of chronic uh, of small traumas that add up to the same symptoms basically so you even if you don't discover deceit or something like that you can be in this relationship which is basically an abusive relationship and yeah. so you're feeling you know that you're you're, you're being hit with more subtle forms of abuse and over time that will wear you down you know i like it liken it to like a child this seems obvious to us all right a child has a parent that maybe the parent isn't hitting them maybe the parents neglecting them maybe the parent uh, is not that interested in them maybe the parent every day is sending them negative messages or negative feedback about who they are either by not ever affirming them or not being interested in them or um or criticizing or overcorrecting. These are subtle things, but, after, but over a while, the child will have poor self-esteem, really poor self-esteem, and um, or they might be very anxious or depressed. Wow, yes. that type of, it's that type that's of thing. Post-trauma, that's right. It just keeps it's there. Right, right, right. So, so um, we kind of touched on it, but but how would you actually define? an abusive or destruction relationship. And I know that the uh, questionnaire probably helps with that, but well, like, yeah, how right. do you like define that? Um, okay, it's any relationship, well, if we're talking about a relationship, that for the duration of it, one person's needs supersedes the others. Okay, in, in, a, in a normal or you know, fa fairly healthy relationship, uh, we're all at times, you know, overwhelmed by emotion, which may make us see the person negatively. Um, we're selfish, where um, we project negativity, um, we're lazy, you know, all this stuff. We it's all do these thing. things. We all, it's, a, right. the, it's that's part, right. probably normal. I mean, we're all, right. we're all perfect, very <laughs> flawed, right? And yeah. we do things, uh, you know, yeah. we, we, we're self serving at times. Um, but the difference would be that um, in a healthy relationship, a person, you have two people who can tolerate their own emotion, number one, right? Mm -hmm. So they're connected to themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and even if they have a fight or some kind of conflict where they're defensive and can't see the other person's need or, or it's somehow threatens them in that moment, eventually, because they can feel, they can also empathize. You know, at some point, um, their conscience is working. See, con emotion is connected to conscience. So at some point, we you would uh, feel bad that you and the partner are now disconnected, you know, or right. there's some this thing yeah, between yeah. you, or you might feel bad about like, oh, I just kind of like, that wasn't nice what I just said or something. Okay, well, let's talk about it again. Or I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, you're right. I was, you know, that was too much and I'm, you know, forgive me or I'm sorry or, you know, and, and then it kind of, you have the emotional bonding comes back, right? Mm -hmm. Because of conscience. Right. So a destructive relationship would be uh, where one person has a problem accessing and tolerating their own emotions. Like they, they tend to be emo they're emotionally shut down for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, and they never have that. Des in fact, the desire for connection is threatening to a person like that mm -hmm. because the partner has the ability to uh, threaten negative emotions that they have learned to keep way down. And of course that will happen in a relationship. It's always right. going to happen. You right. know, a relationship is designed, you know, we, we subconsciously find people who match up our caretakers, right? I don't know if you know much about that, but Imago, look up Imago Relationship Therapy or one of the books written by Harville Hendricks. It's, it's absolutely wow. true that we are subconsciously drawn that when we feel attraction to someone, it's like the person we feel the most connected to we ever have before. And that's because that person has the, the, the characteristics of our caretakers. Wow. And we're only experiencing the good at that time, but eventually we're going to feel the underside of that. You know, uh, that person, because there's so much at stake between us, you know, our lovability, our worth, um, uh, whether they're ever, they're going to stay, you know, those are like things that we don't think about. But yeah. those are the, the wounds, or we might have wounds about that. And maybe one of our parents abandoned us, or maybe 
they, you know, ignored us. And, you know, we all have something like that. So yeah. down, the, down the line in their relationship, those wounds are going to get triggered. And that's where the fighting starts, right? That's where the conflict starts. Yeah. But, um, but this other person, uh, if, if, you know, and, they, and you know, like I said, you can work through it. But for the person who's emotionally shut down, that would be incredibly threatening. Yes, yes. Incredibly threatening. Person that's attracting this, that's, uh, quote, the victim in the situation, mm -hmm. doesn't even realize this dynamic is happening. No, like, no, okay. no. I mean, if, if they knew were really, like, informed at the beginning, they may have seen the traits, but... Right. Um, and and, and they, they, they don't... Go ahead. I was going to say, so that's the importance of, like, the work that you're doing, or, or even of this show, that you're doing, like, yeah recognition like oh boy maybe that might be happening because uh, it's so 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 hidden like who yeah. thinks that that your caretaker subconsciously mm -hmm. bring that forward into your adult life and then you pick somebody that resonates like that like mm -hmm. you wouldn't really know that unless you experienced it or unless you're informed like with the work that you're doing right right and some of this stuff wouldn't even become apparent until there's more commitment in the relationship because every, right. you know, the higher the commitment comes, yeah, the more ability these wounds and these feeling emotions uh, can be triggered. So then you have somebody inside a relationship who is uh, threatened by you, <laughs> and the and the way that they're used to feeling this particular kind of personality, the way they're used to feeling good with themselves, is to just always keep a good good like image. That's what narcissism is. In, in narcissism is in psychopathy you know yeah. that it's 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 a very main feature of people like this they they need to keep this like blameless flawless image of right. themselves in place and anything that threatens it they will right. strike yep you know they will strike so um they will give a negative reaction to anything that makes them feel uncomfortable right. Right. without any resolution to it it's just like, you know, like either I'm, I'm going to walk out of the room. I'm not going to yeah, talk yeah. about that. I'm yeah, going yeah. to scream at you. I'm yeah. going to, you know, do something awesome. that would make you retreat, you know? Yeah. Is that, that's a bit of uh, like bullying on their part in a yeah. way. Like, it's dominance. Like, it's dominance. Like a bull. Like, dominance. Like there's, like you said, there's no resolution. There's no, right. there's, it's just, you just do behave like this. You know? Right. Oh, right, okay. and they have to feel that dominance. They have to feel yeah. in control, and that's the yeah. problem. So if one person has to maintain dominance, you're going to get crushed in the Every process, time. little right. by little. You know, it's that thing where, um, you know, it's a subtle, slow process, like the frog and boiling water thing, or yeah. um, like a cult. I just came across a, a quote the other day. Um, I forget where. Uh, Hitler, I was looking at some other quote, this, it was a quote by Hitler, and he was talking about how to control people. And he said, you do it very subtly. You yeah. little by little take their will away. Right. And then right. your, your will dominates their will. Right. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, he was wow. the expert. <laughs> That's an amazing, yeah, right. That's an amazing um, sort of, uh, it just ties into what we were talking about, uh, like a defining an abusive uh, relationship or destructive is take somebody's will away, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's like with a definition. So mm. sometimes when there's this, um, what we were describing earlier, like the, the caretaking and the upbringing, the sound, we can't see it, we can't see it, but but many times, even though we, we like I said, we can't see it, the, the, the intuition is speaking. Mm. So, so how, like, what advice would you have to others um, to either uh, cultivate the intuition, even though I believe it's uh, like always there, or actually, you might not even have to cultivate it, it's there, but the, the, the courage, you do have to cultivate courage to listen to it. You do. You are fearful, or you are uh, the, that will, the brainwash, the, all this stuff, like, but you know, you know something is wrong and you know you've got to get away from this person. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give people that are in that spot and they, they're, they're afraid to make a move? Well, uh, as a therapist, you know, uh, we're, it, we're, there are, occasionally we project fear onto someone that has nothing to do with them. Like, let's say, uh, for instance, you had been betrayed or abandoned by someone, and you uh, might project that onto a person. Right, like uh, someone that's not betraying you. 
Right, right. And then you talk, but usually the kind of reassurance or answer you, you get from that person will calm the fear and then, you know, it goes away and you realize, okay, uh, but let me, 100% of people that have been deceived have, tell me, tell me either after or, you know, or, or, or while they're going through, like something doesn't feel right. Something doesn't, I can't put my finger on something doesn't feel right. A uh, hundred percent of the time when that's it, they're they're right. That's their yeah, intuition. Yeah. You know, every it's always there. I've never seen it not be there. Yeah, yeah. That's why the, in my case, the, the show was called "I Knew It." Like I just knew it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I knew it. <laughs> so yeah. they know a hundred percent of the time. That's hundred I mean. percent of the time. They just didn't recognize it. Yeah. Right. Right. So, right. Um, so when they are fearful, what what uh, if somebody is recognizing that in them right now, like watching this and being like, "Wow." that's not, um, you know, paranoia. That's not my imagination. You know, I, I've really got to do like, regardless of the consequences, you know, cause the, the again, the logical mind takes over and you're like, well, if I leave him or if I leave her or whatever, it's gonna, this, 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 that, and the other thing bad is going to happen. Or how am I going to do it? You know, be without this person or whatever. Okay. Well, Cause like I've been in the, the situation where I, and, and I literally, regardless of the consequences, but I, but also I was, uh, I was very, uh, prayerful and stuff like that. I was, I was just with the spiritual background, just help me have the courage, you know what I'm saying? But not, not oh. everyone has that, uh, that helped me. I figured like, I uh, think that would help. Yeah, yeah for sure. There. Gonna yeah. help me this. But, but no, absolutely, because then you're connected to something that is, you know, maybe feeding you something, yeah. or telling you something spiritually that, you know, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't be aware yeah. of. I mean, I know that that helped me mm -hmm. uh, be able to step out and take that courage, but um, yes, yes, I, I think, think that would make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. But for other people, just uh, it's not like, oh, just, uh, it's difficult to say, oh, just listen to it. Don't worry about the consequences. But in the long run, I think you and I know that it's worth taking that risk or it's worth whatever the consequences are. Right. But I think it's a process. Yourself from that. Right. It's a hard thing. Yeah, it's a hard thing. Um, you know, like intuition that, you know, I mean, aside from it, the spiritual connection is, is an innate biological process that protects us from danger. So when you feel something something made you feel that but you're not consciously aware of it so there are things registering in your senses and things that are registering subconsciously that make you feel that something's off pay attention what what just made you feel like that right like when somebody um you know for instance like um you know so you find a, 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 a for instance somebody's phone number that you never heard of like, right right kind of a, and comments and it's like and something um oh well, no that's that, that's obvious let me think of something not obvious oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. like something uh is is a little bit different and you're not it's you're not really paying attention to it but you um you know but it's let's say like somebody's acting it could be their body language you're like yeah why, could be. why is he yeah. fidgeting or why there's right but that's intuition some like you might be like why does it right. look funny you know yeah right right or you might even not you might even not notice it at, at the time but then you might notice it later or the next yeah. time something else happens that like there are two things that happen now you're not even aware of it but like it's building or um you know someone is is coming uh, does something that's a little uncharacteristic but you think nothing of it but inside it's registering that's yeah. like pay attention to that stuff. Pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? That mean, might that mean something because when you feel safe in a relationship, and this is my most I see with people, when they feel when they're with a partner that feels safe, like they can trust that person. Mm -hmm. There's none of that. Yes. There's just isn't there. It just wow. isn't there. And yep. the explanation sometimes, you know, an explanation, a deceitful explanation, you might not be like consciously putting it together, but your body can sense it. No. Like you said, a body language or, or the way someone just explains something that was like, huh? You know, yeah. <laughs> it gives you yeah. pause. That is yeah. your intuition talking. And yeah. as far as uh, leaving, um, leave it you know that like i said that's a problem. one of the things to do is like okay you had a spiritual connection and those are the things i would advise uh be honest with yourself about what you know your intuition is telling you um 
give the, I mean, people are loyal and committed and don't want to fail. So they will hold on to a relationship. Okay, try everything then. Try everything. Go to therapy, try different ways of communicating, uh, of getting heard, of, of just, you know, watch the person, um, step back, um, set boundaries if you need to set boundaries, you know, just do some different things yeah, yeah. so that you know that you try everything. Uh, but, be, but the important thing is start to be present to yourself again. Be present, come back into your body, do mindfulness exercises, mm -hmm. uh, create a self container. That's mm -hmm. what I tell people that. In other words, imagine like this is you contained in this space, right? Feel mm -hmm. your body again and yourself. This is yourself. And yeah. Start to notice if you're leaking out of yourself or if something feels intruding into it. So different exercises that give you, um, a sense of yourself again and um, an ability to be inside of yourself. These will breed detachment after a while and you'll be able to see more clearly. And when you see clearly, then you'll you can make one leaf. Yeah. yeah. You'll, and and you'll the have courage. You'll have yeah. the courage because the courage. It'll be undeniable to be like, oh yeah. and I and I like that advice because what you're describing is um, I, I would describe that as um, your boundaries. When you realize mm. that every single one of your boundaries have been violated, yeah. or just because these, when you're in a relationship with someone like that, they they literally they love to see your boundaries. They love to just punch through it, right? Mm. And um, that's what's been my experience. So, so I think that that's part of the uh, that's great advice that's su such great advice if you feel like you like that feeling of like it's it's leaking or uh, like you're 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 um you know you're encased in your own energy or light or whatever and it's mm -hmm. you know i i really really love it and does the mind app just dis discuss things like that or help with that or yeah the uh, mind warrior app um yeah the other thing is to be uh, honest about those fears you're talking about like, what are you afraid of you know are you afraid you can't support yourself financially are you afraid of failure are you afraid of loneliness or, yeah. you know whatever abandonment or abandonment issues coming up, you know, so those, those things will keep us. But eventually, hopefully, if it's really bad and painful, you know, you, you might get out. But yeah, the Mind Warrior app is just, it, it helps with in the moment connection to mind, body, thought, mm -hmm. uh, what it might be reminding you of, like, is this a trigger from your past right now? You know, it's like, and then different ways to kind of ground yourself, be mindful, move past the, this immediate emotion. That's wow. what it does. So it helps you be yeah. connected to yourself and track, you know, go back into your body, track things and learn how to um, use your body and other things as a resource to, just to make you feel better because you, maybe you know, uh, just thinking positively isn't enough. You have to anchor emotion mm. with it or, or yeah. start, you have to anchor experience into the brain. That's what changes the brain. Yeah. And that's what creates neuroplasticity when it, not just thinking like, um, oh, um, I shouldn't feel bad and I should feel positive. No, it doesn't really do. It's like, do something that makes you feel positive. And right. Connect, right. And connect to it. Right. That's what helps change the brain and helps heal. Um, some really good exercises are Peter Levine. He's got this book called Healing Trauma. And there's just a bunch of really good exercises for that kind of thing. Um, there's something else I wanted to say. What was it? I'm trying to remember. Maybe that was it. <laughs> but yeah, eventually these things will, oh, the confusion. That's what I want to talk about. Confusion, the incredible confusion you feel in these relationships. And even toward the end, like, is it me? People are always blaming themselves because you're being blamed a lot and you right, right, are right. taking it on right. and you're maybe probably, like you said, empathic, which is usually an over-responsible person. You know, they tend to take yeah. a lot of responsibility and look at them to themselves all the time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the confusion. So that's the, the, one of the reasons I created the questionnaire uh, for people to take with their therapist. First of all, go to a therapist. That'll help yeah. you process through this. But this questionnaire is in response to people saying um, to me like hundreds of times, well, I went to a therapist and they just didn't get it. I can't find a therapist who gets this kind of thing. Or we went for couples therapy and the therapist sided with my partner and you know, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you manipulator or that well, kind of thing. Yeah. So sure. I thought, okay, well, how can we define these more subtle forms of abuse to educate your therapist? So that's is right. on my, my website. If anybody is free, uh, 
yes. download it, get better gonna, clarity. Um, share it at the end of the show. There's going to be some slides and some information um, uh, about your work. Um, yeah, so since anybody does, um, uh, you know, I'm sure this is helping a lot of people or they may need these resources. Um, so I'm just very happy to share that with everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, so, so uh, I, we're running out of time, but, um, you know, just in closing, is there anything else? Well, what, that's kind of what I wanted to share was like the, your work and what maybe any new projects or anything else that you're working on um, that you just wanted to share with people or just some last words of sort of advice for us closing the show or, and, and, and your latest work. Well, um, you know, support is really critical. I don't know if you got support when you were doing this, but, uh, you know, that's why I feel passionate about groups, creating groups. Mm -hmm. We have a free twice monthly conference call group. Okay. It's good. anonymous. You can call, you just call from any phone and uh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can join. Awesome. Um, um, if you'd like to start a group, we'll help you. I'll help you. I have a guidebook for that. And, um, Basically, just listen to yourself. Listen to your intuition. Yeah. Yeah. Honor, honor yourself. Honor what you're yeah. feeling. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Marianne. Um, I know that so many people are going to be helped um, and blessed and uh, by, you know, by the show and by the information that you've shared. I, and, and I appreciate so much um, the work that you're doing. So thank you, Marianne. I appreciate the work you're doing. And thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, it sure has. Thank you. <laughs> okay.